I'm going in for a drug test. I've been in Vienna for two weeks with the entire cast of of uh, the Three Musketeers and Charlie Sheen and Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I am not going to pass my fucking drug test. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Go straight to jail. So uh, I test dirty, yeah. and I'm supposed to. I've got a, a noon turn in time, and so my father, and my grandfather drive out from Illinois, and they're they're at my house. Um, I'm still in bed. They go to my bank to clear out my my money and all my possessions and my safe deposit boxes because I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, the marshals, I get a phone call and and uh, they hang up. Five minutes later, the marshals are at my door, and I'm not letting them in. My, yeah. It's me and my grandma in there, and. I know, but the thing is, I'm supposed to turn myself in, and they they came at like 10 in the morning, two hours before, just to humiliate me. Mm. And so eventually, they did get the the hinges, the door off the hinges. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, I'm literally tearing bed sheets. I'm on the third floor. My condo's on the third floor, (laughs) and I'm trying to, like, make an escape. (laughs) <laughs> so, oh my god uh, but my dad got back right as I got the door off and I was able to say goodbye to my dad mm-hmm. and I went directly to uh, the, the holding cell downtown from there I went to MDCLA which is maximum security mm-hmm. in with with uh, murderers, weapons dealers drug dealers uh, the worst of the worst I'm in yeah. with some really really bad people and uh there's there's a lot of things that happened when I was in prison. I, I'm working on a book right now, which is very close to being done. It's called I Don't Look Good on Paper. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Ex-porn star. She was uh, an abused child. She's a convicted felon. She's a single parent. She likes sex with just about anybody. You know, on paper, it yeah. just doesn't look it. Yeah. But I'm a really nice person. I just like to fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I violate and... Uh, I've got, I'm in MDCLA the night that they take me in. I've been in a holding tank all day and it's like two in the morning now. Mm-hmm. I've been strip searched, humiliated, embarrassed. I'm put into a cell by myself. Uh, I climb up onto the top bunk and I'm just, they've had me a, a stack of, there's a pair of uh, pants, a t-shirt and underwear and the underwear is stained with someone else's period blood. And oh. you know, it's just, and I'm sitting there not believing I, I don't have fucking parking tickets. I don't, if I do things, I don't get caught. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't do anything this time except for violate probation. So yeah. I did do it. I did do it. But uh, the the two guards came into my cell that night and started talking about the way that I suck cock and what a great cock sucker I am. And they love the way. And I'm going, fuck, I've made this movie. I'm going to get, and I, and I freak the fuck out. I'm screaming. I'm throwing oh a tantrum. God. And I'm up on the top bunk and they're just in the cell and they start laughing and they leave. Mm-hmm. They don't do anything to me. But what happens is every day you are allowed two five minute phone calls. You know, and you got to fight for your spot because anybody bigger is going to kick you out of the line. So it's, right. it's like a, you got to, the moment you get to federal prison, you need to assume that fucking position and, and thank God that I had some acting abilities right. because you, you you don't walk in there and be the little miss you know i'm nice to everybody you, yeah you, you you change you just have to yeah um so i called my attorney and every phone call that goes out of the prison is recorded and my right. attorney said well i'll be contacting the wall street journal i'm going to contact the press everybody's going to know what happened and miraculously the next day i got to go before the judge Hmm. Uh, so I was facing six years for the violation. Wow. And I went before the judge. All really basically around a $2,000 unaccounted for like 1099. No, it's basically because the cunt Tracy Lords gave them. She, I, I read the, the document that she gave them. There was a piece of paper and it was written out. Tracy had, it was her, her statement about the industry and who would be able to help turn people in. The people that knew everything. There was me, there was Tom Byron, and there was Harry Reams on that piece of paper. Wow. I was the first one they went after. And since it took so long and nothing came of it. They didn't go after Tom and Harry, but Tracy started this whole fucking thing. It never would have happened in the first place if it weren't for her. The drug violation, all on me. I did that. 
I take full responsibility. Right. But it never should have happened in the first place. Right. I never should have learned how to mix and fix heroin so I could shoot up my celly, so the junkie, so that I didn't go to the hole. I never should have learned how to make a shiv. I never should have learned how to how to take light bulbs out of a ceiling, use a pencil and, and a, a, a pair of tweezers or a clippers and make a, a match to light my cigarette so I can smoke in my cell. I watched a girl get sodomized and her eye poked out. Federal prison is no fucking joke. So do I, am I mad at Tracy Lords? Do I have a problem with the content? Yes, I do. I do. And, uh, they'll, you know, a lot of the stories will be told when, when my book comes out, but, uh, the judge ordered that I do, uh, 30 days in a rehab and then 90 days in I'm uh, Gateway CCC, and Gateway CCC is an echo park. They call them cottages, and basically they're these little houses on this gated, you know, prison razor wire community. And there were seven women, four in my house, three in another, and over 80 men. And these are the people that have gotten out of prison after doing long, hard time and are trying to transition back into society. So it's kind of like a halfway house. Yeah, but I'm in with, with Essie the arsonist. Margaret, the murderer, who's proud that she she just did seven years for killing her husband. She's getting out, and she's all happy. Uh, and then I can't remember the other girls because she was kind of boring. She just did credit card theft. Um, <laughs> I got a murderer, Jesus. a murderer, and an arsonist to focus on right Jesus. now. So, uh, so I ended up. 30 days of rehab, but the full amount of time in prison was three months and 17 days with another 30 tacked on in, in rehab. Wow. And uh, So you did three? So I did three months and 17 days federal. Right. And uh, 30 days in a rehab. Wow. And, you know, it may not sound like a lot of time, but just the way that things happen there and the way that things are and the way that you are so isolated from society and from your friends and from the people that you know. Yeah. Uh, It made me stop wearing come fuck me shoes and start wearing fuck you boots. Mm. You know, it it, it gave me a hardness that I don't like in myself. Mm -hmm. It gave me an edge. It made me see the ugly in people. And I choose choose to see the beauty in people. Right. So it's an experience that I wish never happened, but I appreciate what I've learned from it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.